Aspen UK is hopefully watching this. We are looking at, I just pulled the boards off here. I, I did a couple of potentiometers, straighten these out and check, pulled apart the ones that were bent. And uh, bottoms on these are really rugged. None of them cracked. They're in really good shape. And uh, tested them with a meter and everything's perfectly smooth after greasing them up. And so I think those are all fine now. The master was hit and this one here. And um, the rest of them seem okay. There's a couple bent ones on here. We'll be looking at as we get that board out. So here we go. I'm going to show you the trick on this. Carefully pull this one out. And, uh, I don't want to overstress it. Those actually don't look broken, so I'm trying not to break them. I think they'll be okay. Usually these don't break, but I've seen occasions where they did. These absolutely amaze me down here because they're cracked and every one of them was working, but they are completely cracked. I mean, they're they're so cracked they make me look sane. No, <laughs> woo! I'm daffy. I'm wacky. Okay, here we go. Let's try to pull that out without it snapping. Oh boy! Yeah, yeah. Here, crinkle, crunch. Come on. Uh, oh. There we go. Okay. Oh, that one came off. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. It's uh, just easier to get them out if they don't. Ah, there we go. Can you believe those were still working? I mean, they were just completely cracked. There's just no way those should have been still working, but every button was working on this thing. <laughs> so. At least we got the buttons all checked first, and uh, they look very healthy beyond this point right here, I think. I don't see any other cracks happening, but I'm going to truncate it back past the curve. Actually, I do see, I think, a tiny crack right there at the curve. But if you get past the curve, it's usually good. And then this one is, I can see abrasions right in the curve there, or uh, fractures. So we take the little scissors and we'll truncate that back to right in there. And we'll go back a little further with that because that'll be in the way otherwise got a transparent support that hangs there. Okay, and then we're going to uh, pull that one right back to there also. Yeah, they did a lo lovely job. Uh, a little over that, but it's okay, because the only uses the three middle connectors there, so a little nip on the edge one, right? <laughs> Those are in fine shape down there. So that stuff we trash and uh, take a little bit of this and carefully because you have to be fast with it because otherwise it will affect the plastic's uh, characteristics. But we're going to set it up so there's no stress on it so even if it's a little brittle it won't matter. But you can't get the insulin. Oh man. you, you got to love this lid. I mean, child proof. Uh, no, it, it drives adults to become like children, throwing a tantrum and throwing things. And, oh, you actually rip the whole scene before it'll pull the cap off real safe. <laughs> the inside part comes out. Who made this stuff? That's Clean Strip. Clean Strip, you need to fix your can design. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> get a uh, nice... Tapered piece here. Put that on there. And clean off the insulation and be ready with a towel to soak up the excess. Have to get it off the very end very quickly there then.
and that gives you minimal penetration into the plastic with the acetone while getting this off. I did one for Ryan Powers down in uh, Salt Lake City, he's a DJ down there, and uh, wonderful machine he had there, except when we went to do this part, I couldn't get regular acetone down there because all the druggies are trying to, you know, make drugs with it or the people who are selling it. And so I got, you know, that one, that one actually is going to need to be trunked a little more. I can see it's just brittle right out in that edge. Let's do it again back about here. Do that. Okay. Right, once more. No, this thing, I've never seen one do this. This is splitting. This is scaring me. It is Bob. In fact, it's time to do an experiment here. Hmm. This is a fragment of the um, piece I knocked off that. I dipped it in something that is called Dura Tough. It's a eclectic product, same company that makes RV goop that I use extensively. I'm just watching. Half of it's dipped, half of it isn't. And I'm going to watch if it curls it up. I think it is just a little bit. But if that stuff will dry on there, I'm telling you, that is something else. That stuff is so tough. It's just incredible polymer. I put it on the dome of my van to protect it from ultraviolet radiation because it's got a stained glass window kind of scheme on top now made out of the stuff that is not UV resistant. And so I'm using this as a blocker for the UV, but um, also it gives us protective coating that I guess you can throw rocks at and stuff, and it's <laughs> pretty good at um, maintaining its integrity. So I'm going to let that dry. It, I mean, it's not its not going, <coughs> I'm melting, melting, what a world, what a world. It's not doing that thing at all, <clears throat> fortunately. My sister played that part in a skit in college, and I always have to imitate her. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I uh, play... They did the Wizard of Oz, okay, but they had the dr the dress rehearsal, and they forgot to put the she was they they couldn't have her melt in because it was too high budget for their production, so they had her fall into this cauldron, and uh, somebody forgot to put the mattress down that she was supposed to fall on during the dress rehearsal, so it was I'm melting, melting, what a world! <laughs> Everybody just cracked up. It was like just. Not good, of course. It kind of knocked the wind out of her, but <laughs> anyway, it is warping it some. I don't like that. I don't think it's going to necessarily be friendly enough solvent for this plastic. It may deform it too much. We'll see what it dries like. It doesn't warp it too much. I mean, it can't hurt anything. Once that stuff gets dry, <laughs> you've got a brand new piece of plastic over the top of it that is way better than the original plastic and as long as the original plastic isn't cl uh, cracked already so we'll see what it does alrighty this is a chroma polaris that we're going to ship to Craig Aspen in England friends over there hopefully will enjoy this tremendously always be careful pulling these apart because you know your ribbon cables almost touch that back board there you see and you don't want to stress those too much many of them are cracked of course when you get them now these have been coated with a substance that is also made by eclectic I'll do a little plug here although I'm not maybe eclectic will put ads up eventually on my site but for now this is <laughs> completely an unsolicited advertisement <laughs> but many technicians maybe use E6000, the craft glue. I, I tend to use the RV Goop more because it, it's a little more generally useful, I think, for me. Uh, I like the drying time. I like um, the uh, properties it has when it's dried. 
just a little better I think but I use both of them for different things a lot of good strength in those adhesives and uh, they're very flexible when they dry this is another product and it's called Duratuff it's, as you can see these are a little shiny they've been coated with that Duratuff and I hope that will now last forever <laughs> it uh, has coated that original plastic which tends to get brittle so it protects it it's a UV and I assume ozone blocker won't react with that stuff I don't think and is very stable now underneath here I've got a screw I put in there and I experimented with the Duratoff and coated it to see how much it would affect it and it just you know it warped just a tiny amount not anything significant the plastic kind of, you know, I, I wouldn't put the Duratuff on when it's bent, you know. get I got these out. I didn't do these when they were bent. I got them out of the connectors carefully, and actually I trimmed this one just a hair because the end of it was starting to fracture, and I figured, well, I'll just get that all cleared up there. But down here are the other ones that come out. And we tighten up all these potentiometers. They can be, you know, often if they get hit, they'll stress. And I just removed them and tightened up the um, clamps on all of them on the outside there. Now I've got a little spacer under this one to make because it wanted to go that way. And I'm just trying to minimize the stress on it. And uh, I think that's about the best config right there. And so all those are double coated at least. I guess three coats total on one side once, twice on the other. And you can see under there I've got ribbon cables that then fold back and they go back into the original holes there. So I just removed those uh, connectors. And now they are RV gooped down. As you can see it's tagged there so that these will not move. I found a very low stress place and attached them there with that springy adhesive. So that should uh, put that into framework of being able to work indefinitely. Chroma Polaris has all kinds of software tweaks. You can set the velocity of each key, the velocity response. If uh, you have clean contacts and you set that all up, they should work great. This thing still has the original batteries in it, which tend to last quite a while. Uh, set that thing maybe there. Oh. That. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the original batteries look like that. The Matsushita D cells and the EEPROM chips and here's your DAC. Very hard to find DAC. Hope that doesn't go bad. And uh let me get this thing propped up. Of course all your uh yeah, digital chips there, the CPU back under that aluminum the shield right there it uh, presses down the chip power supply has some adjustments depending on which version it is they'll have different ones and uh, all that stuff in the manual how to adjust that and your uh, voice chips your your uh, oscillators and then there are some comparators and op amps in there for pulse width mod and so on and then your filter chips CEM3372s and the dual VCO CEM3374 chip over here. See them uh, in this line, uh, yeah, right over there anyway. They go into the keyboard. And so there's six of those total. But that's kind of the insides of that. And there's just multiplexer chips on the front panel, pretty much, I guess. And um, so those select the data sliders 10 kilopots that are programming everything including the volume control it has a multi-purpose volume control on it well, that's kind of the chroma polaris inside and that gives you a clue how we do these be very careful if you ever try to repair these i do them for people uh... in the past because i just don't recommend people try it it's if you make a mistake you crack it too close and you're finished you can't fix it once it gets cracked too close so be very careful if you ever work on these things uh, to not hook those things on anything or stress them too far back close to the base or 
you could destroy them and the front panels, you know, what do you do? I mean, you could try to clamp into it with something, it's, you know, I guess, uh, pull the whole thing apart. It'd be a pain, it'd be a nightmare to try, and it probably wouldn't be reliable, the connection you'd get. But um, anyway, so you try to keep them long enough to where you can attach something to them. Basically, here is the philosophy in that Duratuff should be a major help in that. That's a substance that seems to not react with the plastic to a degree that it actually deforms them badly. But like I say, if you put it, if you were to put it on there, when I put goop on one, the goop melted through and it just folded and busted in half. So on my unit, I had to truncate these. But on this one, they were actually in pretty good shape. There was a little sign of checking in there, but now the Duratuff on it, it'll it'll be fine. I'm sure it's got great conductivity all the buttons work so we're just gonna leave it like that and um, yeah that is the chroma Polaris. the uh, adjustments you you run through uh, adjustment number seven you go lower function adjustment seven and uh, then you just move your benders to recalibrate those if that ever goes out and uh, what's eight, the foot pedal, I think it is, I can't remember, adjustment eight. You can move the foot pedal through its motion the same way, and so you can use arbitrary foot pedals with it, anything that has a continuous resistance. Ah, uh, there it is, all back together. Got a little pedal here to... Pedals all calibrated.
Just want to make that sound again. You can see how I made it. Anyway. <laughs> that was F11. demonstration of the features there. So that, I guess, wraps it up. I, I never used the, uh, I don't even know how to use the sequencer on these. I've never used it. <laughs> and, uh, so, works, but have you uh, know a good quick tutorial on that? It's mine all, it seems like all mine also do this flashing thing where they jump to play. I've gone through several that did that. <laughs> and, uh, I don't even know how to reset that. It doesn't affect the sound. There's an air honk that happens. You just turn the air honk off. <laughs> this one doesn't do it, though. This one seems to be all good in that way. So, yeah, everything works there. All the buttons are all completely fixed. Everybody's happy. Yep. Think on, of course. Yeah. Two envelopes. 